Chef Pennington here. Today we are doing the iconic Louisville, Kentucky Hot Brown. This sandwich comes from the Brown Hotel. It is absolutely one of the most amazing things you guys are going to ever eat. We are going to make a creamy Mornay sauce all using our Instapot. We're all crazy about the Instapot right now, which is totally cool. And we're going to use the saute feature, which is really easy to use. And the nice thing is once the sauce is done, it helps keep it warm. It's just like the perfect thing to make sauces in. So let's get started. Okay, let's check out our ingredients here. Classically, turkey is what's used in the hot brown. I went ahead and got a rotisserie chicken from the grocery store. Most grocery stores have those nowadays. They're just a great buy. I do have a recipe for the perfect roast chicken, which I'll put in the link below. We're using Texas toast. We're using big, delicious, awesome toast because we're making an open face sandwich. So we're going to try to use really good bread. A little paprika. It's nice for garnish if you guys like it. We're going to make a roux. We're going to add some really high quality milk. We're going to make a bechamel. And then we're going to add some great cheese to it, turn it into a Mornay sauce. A little bit of tomato helps cut through all the, the deliciousness and balances things out. We love bacon. Classically, use a Pecorino Romano cheese. I went for an Italian blend. It has that. It has some Parmesan, some Fontina, and Asiago. Just adds more flavor. So, And then we're going to make our bechamel with our Instapot. So let's get going here, guys. This is going to be great. So let's start with our bacon. Preheat your oven. It definitely changes the cook time if you don't have it preheated, but we're going to go for 20 minutes at 400 degrees in your oven. It's roughly 30 minutes, I'm sorry. Um, but keep an eye on it about at least 20 minutes afterwards because all ovens cook a little differently and the thickness will matter. But we got some delicious bacon there. Cooked just perfectly. And that's the beauty of the oven. So we're going to use... Texas toast, but we're going to cut off the outsides. Now, the reason we're taking the crust off is because that's how they do it at the Brown Hotel. So we're really trying to do everything like they do it. Then we're going to take one piece and cut it into two triangles. Now, this is an open face sandwich, so this is going to give us more sandwich area to load up with goodies. So there we go. You want to use a fairly large serving vessel. If you have some of those earthware um, pots, I can put a link below for one. It really works really great. So they use turkey, they hand pull it. So I've got chicken here, and this is leg and thigh meat that I hand pulled off and tried to keep the pieces as large as possible. I like chicken better than turkey. I think turkey's just not my favorite, but everyone's a little different. So we're going to put three pieces on each side, and the acidity from the tomato really does cut through the creaminess of the sauce. It bounces everything out. got to have the tomatoes. You don't like tomatoes, no problem. But I think it really did... I think it's just not the same without the tomato for me. So let's start making a Mornay sauce, which is a bechamel sauce, which is a cream, creamy white sauce, essentially. And we're going to add some cheese to it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our roux. We're using three tablespoons of flour and four tablespoons of butter. Usually those numbers are the same. You usually want equal numbers. But since we're adding the cheese to the sauce and we're making a, a creamy sauce, you use a little bit less of the flour because the thickening agent isn't needed in the sense of using four. It would be too thick is what that really means. <laughs> so we're going to get our butter into our Instapot. And notice how the middle part is raised up here. See how the butter wants to go around the edges? I think that's a really helpful feature of the Instapot. See how I can just swirl around and not worry about things in the middle, per se, that could be burning at that moment? Um, just I mean, if, I'm a fan of this Instapot, and this is... I mean, as far as making sauces goes, I've not made many with this yet, but the coolest feature about this, about the Instapot, is after we're done, it's going to keep it warm for us. Usually when you make a sauce in the stove, if you don't serve it real quick, it's going to tighten up on you immediately, and you're going to have to do that it and do whatever to bring it back to life. But this Instapot keeps it going for you, and just amazing. I'm going to make so many sauces with this moving forward. So I only used a third of the milk from... The measuring cup to get started just so we can get all the ingredients happy together and bring them together into one homogenous thing you'll see how the butter kind of disappears and it becomes a nice solid color of milk butter and flour <laughs> but you'll see it's starting to thicken up really quick right there and that's when we're going to stick in the rest of our two-thirds of our milk in there and you'll notice we have an extra little bit of milk and we'll get to that in a moment that's your insurance policy always keep some milk on hand when you're doing this we're going to add that when we add the cheese because the cheese is going to want to tighten up real quick. But as we're making our bechamel here, keep stirring, keep stirring, keep stirring. Part of what we're doing here also is we're helping the flour, you know, integrate into the, the milk. 
<clears throat> that's the reason we cook this for a while. We want to cook it out. It's about thickening it, but we're also hydrating that flour. You think it would happen just instantly, but you can still get gritty graininess if you don't allow that little bit of time to cook it out. A little white pepper, just more flavor. You can use black pepper if you want. I mean, it's not really white, is it? <laughs> I don't know why they call it white pepper, but it is, it is nice stuff. French use it a lot. So we have a fairly loose sauce here, but it has starting to tighten, and we'll notice that it'll coat the back of a spoon, which is important. We don't want this too thick at this point, because if it were too thick, if we had put in four tablespoons of flour, once we add the cheese, this would turn into glop. It would be horrible. Um, there will be a link below that'll have all the measurements, everything all ready for you, and, and some information. I've got an article all in bechamel that really talks about the, the whole aspect of bechamel making in the really classic French way. Um, so that'll be linked in the article too if you guys wanted to prove that. And then there is a video on that making a very classic bechamel, which is the best white sauce you ever could have. It's amazing. Which a bechamel technically isn't a white sauce, but that's a whole other conversation. So we're getting thick here. Everybody's coming together nicely. It's starting to look like a true sauce. And this is where our backup milks our buddy. It's always important to keep that on, on hand when you're making a creamy sauce. Because it just can go to, it can just tighten up on you out of nowhere. But this is cooked long enough that once we've added our cheese, we're not going to be tightening up anymore. So that addition of that milk really is going to allow us to be what it is. Unless it cooks down, of course. And here we go. Notice the, the nice toastiness on the bread. That's, that's real important. That's going to give us more texture for the dish. And this creamy, delicious Mornay, guys. This is the money shot. This dish is so much better than it looks. And it doesn't look bad by any means. But when you bite into it, I'm telling you, it's just absolutely... There's a reason it's iconic and it's so famous. I could go for one of these right now. I shot this video about two days ago, so it'd be nice to <laughs> have it again. I might have to make it soon. But we're not done. We've That's really looking great, but the bacon, guys, there's there's our best buddy right there. Um, the brown oats only gives you two pieces. I'd like to for four, which I think looks better, and who, want, who doesn't want more bacon? And we have created a Louisville, Kentucky hot brown, guys. Let's take a little taste here. This is my actual impression after I put everything together and took a little taste. And I was so excited right now getting this going, but I made sure to get a little bit of everything so that it was just a perfect bite. And it is hot, so I can't just stick it in my face right at this moment. But I was like counting the seconds like, oh, I can't wait to eat it. So let's see how, let's see how I, what my impressions were. Wow, I was really good. Oh my goodness. Mm. I wasn't ready for this. This is great. I really hope you guys enjoy this. Come over and join us on social media. Love to have you guys. Go ahead and subscribe. Links, everything below. Everything you guys need to make sure this is the best hot brown you've ever had. You guys have the best.